everybody and welcome back to the Girly Girl Bookworm. So today I have for you my end of January wrap up. I'm so excited to bring this to you because I felt like the end of January and the beginning of January like went so well. I've DNF'd quite a bit but my month was so fantastic in terms of quantity where I read 19 books. But not only that, I feel like I've gotten my physical reading group back which is like so awesome. Um, I feel like I'm finding myself prioritizing that a little bit more so I'm like really happy with that. And the other thing that I'm super happy with is the fact that I gave five, five stars this month. And like, I feel like that never happens. Um, so it was really nice to have like a month where I felt like I found some really good like favorites. And I kind of feel like this is how like last year started where like I started off really strong and then I petered off by the end. But like, hey, I'm not going to complain. A month with five, five stars is fantastic. Even if there were a few like duds thrown in along the way. So. Um, I'm going to start with, um, Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. I started talking about this briefly in my last wrap up, um, where I was starting to read this and guys, this one had me sobbing from the very first like page to the very end. Like the prologue instantly got me crying and then I was on to get off again crying the whole time. We're following this couple and they were married and they went through some tough problems there's some trigger warnings there to the point where they ended up getting a divorce but they've stayed in each other's lives because they co-own like a restaurant together so they've stayed in each other's lives they've got two children and something kind of spurs them to almost wonder like could there be a second chance for them and it was such a beautiful story it's a heartbreaking story it's so emotional and I gave this one five stars I could not especially I knew it was going to be five stars the second that that prologue made me cry I went this book is going to be five stars and 100% was right five stars Kennedy Ryan is an emotional queen of the guys um and then I finished oh I don't have it Wilder Women, um, I ended up giving this one three stars. I had this one through NetGalley. This came out this past November. It's kind of connected-ish to, um, I just saw it, A Beast of Extraordinary Circumstances um, in the sense of there's kind of like this magical realism type of element where we are following two sisters. Um, five years prior, their mother, Nora, um, went missing. And, um, they have powers and one of them was like over 18, I think when it happened. So she's been on her own while the other sister has been with a foster family and the youngest one is about to graduate high school. And so they're supposed to go on this like sister trip to celebrate, but the youngest sister has other plans. They want to, she wants to try to find their mother. So it's kind of their journey to seeing if they could find her or not. Um, it was okay. I liked it enough, but I, when you compare the two, this one definitely didn't satisfy me as much as the other one did. I just found it to be very long and drawn out and just more tedious than anything. I liked the bond of the sisterhood, the sisters. I liked kind of the magicalness of it, but it just, at the end of the day, just felt very like blah. So I ended up going with three stars. Um, I think I would definitely try her books again. I just think this one in particular didn't really hold my attention as much as the previous book that she wrote. Um, I read Breathless by Amy McClough. McClough? I'm not positive. So this one I was saving for a wintry day, and we've been really struggling in Connecticut to get a wintry day. It's, it's below zero this weekend, but, like, we have had, like, no snow. We've had a little bit of snow in December or there was like one day of it and then it melted and it was gone like we have had like no snow so I've been like praying for some snowy days so I could read my snowy reads but I was like let's just read one because I need to read one and I picked this one up and we're following a journalist and she is about to summit this mountain because there is this like famous mountaineer and he has offered her an interview if she summits this mountain with him um, and it kind of hinges on that. If she doesn't summit, she won't get the interview. So we're following her along this journey, but we also know, based off of the way the prologue is, that there is somebody kind of, like, out to get people. Like, they start dropping off one by one. Who's doing it? Um, the first part, the first half was very boring. Uh, I wanted to DNF it. I didn't really like it. I was like, I could kind of care less. But by the second half, I could not stop turning the pages and I wanted to find out what was going on, even though I predicted what was going on pretty early on in the book. So 
I was torn because I was like, part of me wants to give this four stars, but it was also predictable, but it was also really boring in the first half. So I ended up going with a little middle of the road. I went with three stars. I would try her again. I feel like maybe she'll learn from her pacing errors and it'll be a little bit different because then not only did it like get like, was it slow in the beginning? The end was like super fast. Like all of a sudden the epilogue happened and it was like, and we're done. And it was just like too quickly. So it was like, we went from really slow to too fast to, I just, pacing can like make or break a book. And unfortunately the pacing got to this one. So three stars for this one. Um, I apparently wrote four stars though. I did not give this book four stars. I don't know why I have a fourth star in here. Um, I read The House in the Pines for a book club, for the Novel Cult book club over on Instagram, and although the Zoom session was really fun to listen to, <laughs> the audiobook was not. Um, I have audiobook through Libro FM, and I was kind of, not that I wasn't interested in this, this one I originally didn't download, I don't remember if I originally downloaded it, I don't think I did, but then when I found it was the book club choice, I did download it. So we're following a girl, and she watches this video and she sees somebody just drop dead with no cause no nothing but she recognizes somebody in the video from her past and he was also present when somebody else just randomly dropped dead in her past so she's wondering if there's something creepy going on so she has to go back to her hometown to see if she can figure out what's going on now this one, again, just did not work for me. It was very slow. The main character has a drug use problem, um, which made it very difficult for me to want to listen to her because she's very unreliable because she's coming off of some drugs right now and she's very unreliable herself. Um, but the whole story never, like, there was always this vibe of, like, something's not right. But, like, there was no reason for something to not be right. Like, she was so paranoid that it just, like, didn't feel like we were even following a mystery. And then when the twist happened, it was, like, so out there that, like, I couldn't suspend my disbelief. I think because I was so critical of it from the get-go because I wasn't enjoying it from the get-go that when the twist happened, like, I couldn't just, like, let it go. Like, I just... It didn't work for me. So I ended up giving that one two stars. Um, and then I read Sign Here by Claudia Lex. Now this one was interesting because I, this is like one of those books that's like kind of out of my comfort zone because it's got that kind of fantasy element, but it's also kind of really just like set in our real world as well. And we're following this person named Peyote and he works in hell. And part of his job is to sell souls to hell. So if you're like, oh my gosh, like, please let me get into college. Like, I'll do anything. He, like, shows up and he's like, anything? You could sign here. And you could have all the dreams you want, right? Um, so that's kind of his job. And he kind of has this idea of a way to kind of get out of this situation and in order to do so, like, you need a full, he needed a full set. And that's, like, if you get a certain amount of people from the same family to sign their soul over. So he has this goal that he's going to sign a member of this family. But he also has this, like, new recruited, like, worker working with him that kind of messes with his obvious, like, plan of making this happen. So we're following him, but we're also following the family that he eventually, like, wants to get somebody to sign for him. We don't know who he's trying to get to sign for him, but we know one of the family members is obviously who he's trying to target. Um, so we're following their story um, during this one summer. And I found it so gripping and engaging. Like, it was so funny. I started this before work. I've been trying to get up earlier than normal so that way I could have some time to either like take a moment and read to myself or I could clean something so I don't have to clean it later and it's been making my life amazing like waking up a full hour early has been like amazing because I used to wake up at 5 30 and then I wouldn't get out of bed till 6 15 and then I was like rushing around the house for the next 45 minutes to get out the door with two kids and now I wake up at five and like I'm ready to go by like 5 45 so then I have from 5.45 to 6.40 to, like, do what I need to do. And it's been phenomenal. That aside, I started this 
And I got 50 pages in and I was like, I don't want to go to work. I don't want to go anywhere. I just want to sit here and finish this book. Um, and I ended up really enjoying it. I gave it four stars. There was a little bit of a storyline that I could kind of like do without, but it was just such an interesting book. Like, I don't even know how to put my thoughts into words with this one because it was just such a uniquely itself story that I feel like it's one of those things where like, you just need to try it. And then if it works for you, great. And then if it doesn't, you like stop reading. But like, for me, like, it was just such a quirky thing that I was just hooked into and like had to figure out how this was gonna all like pan out in the end so I gave it four stars I'm excited to try her again it was some it was just a unique reading experience that I'm glad that I tried um and then I read Angels of the Resistance through NetGalley this is by Noelle Salazar I was so excited for her to have another book after really enjoying Flight Girls years ago and this one came out this past November. I was supposed to read it earlier, and I just couldn't fit it in. Um, now, this is a World War II historical fiction novel, which you know me. I have been kind of the type of person to stay away from World War II. It's just not something, not that I don't enjoy it. I just feel like it's an oversaturated part of the genre that I just, like, don't typically want to read it. But I liked this one so much because it took place in the Netherlands, so it was kind of like an out, like, it felt like it was a removed type of story it was not the typical like in Germany or in Poland or in England like it was something that I just felt like I didn't know a whole ton about we were following two sisters and they end up joining the resistance and it was really interesting to see how these two sisters like work together to try to help their country um I gave it five stars I absolutely sobbed. I listened to this one on audio because Hoopla ended up having it by the time I decided to read it. And I was like in the car driving by myself just like sobbing, sobbing, just all the tears. Um, so five stars for this one as well, which makes me super happy. Um, if you have not tried a Noelle Salazar book, I highly recommend you try either Flight Girls or this one. Um, even if you're like me who kind of are a little hesitant about World War II books, like, I think that you'll really enjoy this one. It's very dark. There's lots of trigger warnings. Um, it's a time of war, so of course it's going to be dark, but, um, definitely one to check out. And then we've got, um, Our Ride to Forever, which is by Julia Olivia. This one comes out February 9th. This is the third book in the Honeywood series, which I've talked a lot about on this channel. It's such a fun romance series, and guys, this one might be my favorite one out of all of them. I'm sorry if you can hear my dog barking. Um, this one, we are following a woman who has been trying to make it work. She's been trying to do, like, a yoga on the side but because she wants to really kind of do that full time. But when she's not there, she's working at Honeywood, so she's friends with all of the friends from the previous books. And then we are following the owner of a restaurant nearby. And their romance was just, I don't know, they just had such a banter about them. Like, I don't want to spoil it because I felt like this is one of those books where, like, obviously I went into it not knowing anything. I just picked it up for the, because it's the next book in the series. And the end of the prologue just had my, like, jaw dropped. Like, I was, like, mind blown already. And then once, like, the pieces started to come together, I was like, oh my god what is happening and it was just it was such a good time um this is one of my favorite ones out of the like I think this might be my favorite of anything that she's written I just like I loved it so much so definitely check this one out I think paperbacks just went, recently went live um so that way if you order them you'll have them hopefully by release day so definitely go check this one out it'll probably be on Kindle Unlimited because I think the other two are as well so you have time to catch up on the series if you love like a theme park type of love story like definitely small town vibes like mm, go run and get this and then we've got this doozy um taste of stage by Yafa S. Santos I feel so bad because somebody gifted me this book it was like one of those things where like if you buy a book for somebody else somebody else will buy a book off of your wish list whatever um, so this was bought off my wish list, and I listened to this one on audio through Hoopla, and this is one of my lowest rated books on my shelf. If you watched my video last year where I, like, ranked my TBR in order of ratings, this was one of, the, like, the last five, and it belongs there. It was not good. Um, so she owns a restaurant in the very beginning of the book, but it 
fails because she just can't make it work money wise. So she closes her shop, her restaurant, and she starts to work for him. Now he is very like, like grumpy and stiff and just annoying. And I don't like him. Um, but they end up working together and they end up in a weird relationship. She's got this weird thing that like, I feel like doesn't really make sense. But apparently it's like when people make food, if they put feeling into the food, she will take on that feeling in some way, shape, or form. I don't know. It was, like, a very subtle storyline. Like, it was, like, kind of there, but it, like, wasn't there, but it was there. And it just, like, I don't know. It just was, like, so weird because when they finally got together, like, we were listening to his perspective at one point. He's like, I hope she would like to date me. And I was like, wait, you like her? Like, nothing leading up to this point let me know that you even had feelings for her now you want her to date you like I'm very confused like their relationship went from like zero to 380 miles per hour very fast like by the end like there was some stuff happening that I was like this was only over a few months like what is this is too fast too fast um and it just like was really unbelievable the male narrator was awful like it he does not fit this type of story at all like he had no business being in this part of the story um and then there's like weird things like there was like this scene about this lobster because she didn't want to like cook the lobster and I don't know why but like it was like running around the like restaurant they're like we have to catch him get a stick like he went there like oh my god like they were acting like he was like crap like they were acting like he was really fast and I was like I've sat on the floor with lobsters as a kid, like, I used to, like, play with, like, my parents would get lobsters, and I'd sit on the ground with them, like, they're not fast by any means, like, you can catch them if you want to, it was just, like, a weird, like, it was just a strange scene, and I just didn't like it, I gave it two stars, I was probably being nice, but, no, this one belonged at the bottom of my ratings, and then we've got You're Invited by Amanda Jaitza, 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 I don't know, um, this one was an interesting read as well. I gave this one four stars. This one, I'm so excited that I finally got to it because I really wanted to last year. It has weddings in it. Like, you know me with weddings. Like, I don't know why it took me so long to get to this one. But we've got this one. And we are following a girl who somehow, like, weirdly gets invited to her ex-best friend's wedding. And, like, she's marrying, like, her ex-boyfriend. And she's like, no, I need to go there and I need to stop this wedding from happening. And this happened. This is happening in their home country, um, which is in Sri Lanka, and they she's been living in, like, L.A., so she, like, flies out there to stop this wedding from happening, and we know something weird has happened, because in the beginning, we're finding these chapters and things from, like, be, she's being interviewed for something. We know that, like, something has gone down with the bride. We don't know if she's dead. We don't know if she's hurt. We don't know if she's missing. We don't know what's going on. It's assumed that she's dead, um, and so we're looking back at the previous days of the wedding so we're like could our main character have done something like did she really want this wedding to stop so badly that she killed her did something else in this like wedding fiasco like did that did something happen and she's like a really like the one that's getting married is a very like famous like influencer too so like could it be somebody who is coming after her for that like we don't know I liked it. I gave it four stars. I would have liked the pacing to be a little bit faster. I don't know if it necessarily needed to be this long of a book because I think it's like, yeah, it's almost, it's like 374 pages. So for me, like, it didn't need to be that long. I really liked the dynamics and, like, looking into this wedding and, like, all the components of this wedding. So, like, it was a good book. I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. I just wish the pacing was just a little bit all right, so on to my DNFs for the month. So I DNF'd Cult Classic by Sloan Crossley. I think I might have talked about how I was possibly going to DNF this at the last one. I was trying to listen to it, and it's just, it was very dull. I never wanted to pick it up. It just wasn't what I wanted it to be. It just felt very, more, it felt smarter than I needed it to be, if that makes sense. Um, I soft DNF'd Homewreckers by Mary Kate Andrews, and I soft DNF'd this one because I put this on hold for my library for the like Kindle copy thinking that I was going to get it for several months from now because it literally said you will get this in several months and then it came like a week later and I just wasn't ready for it like this for me is screaming like I need to read this in the summer 
and I tried reading it because I was like, it came through, I should try to read it, and I just wasn't in the right headspace for this one, so I'm soft DNFing it because it just wasn't, it's not the book's fault, it was just my timing was not here, so this is going to go back on my shelf to read in the summer. Um, this hold came in as well under Lock and Skeleton Key by Gigi Pandian. Now, unfortunately, I'm really upset because I have the sequel of The Runette Galley and I don't want it to affect my rating, but I don't want to give it, I don't even want to try it because this writing just felt so clunky and it was just, there was a lot and it just, I, I felt like every time like I tried to read this, my eyes were just like rolling to the back of my head because I just was so tired of like, it just like the writing style just wasn't working for me and I just I couldn't do it. I don't know why. I just, it just was not working. And then this one is Nobody But Us by Laura Van Rensburg. This seemed like it should have been fine. It was like, we're following this couple and they're going away on this like six month anniversary trip or something like that. They, she was a student, he's a professor or something like that. And they, I made it a hundred pages in, but like nothing really happened. Like Finally, I got to the 100, I was like, just give it to 100 pages. Just give it to 100 pages. So I gave it to 100 pages, and, like, this twist happened. I was like, okay, maybe I'm sold. And then I kept reading, and I think I got, like, 30 more pages in, and then I just didn't care. Like, I didn't care. Like, I didn't want to pick it up. I was looking forward to picking something else up. So I just was like, that's a sign right there that I just don't need to force this right now, and I'm DNFing it. So I DNFed this one as well. So had some DNFs, but I did have such great highlights. Like, I'm so excited that I got Before I Let Go to be five stars. Um, All Right to Forever was five stars. Angels of the Resistance was five stars. Like, to read Sign Here and actually not be upset with it. Like, I was worried because I had seen some negative reviews for it. So, like, for that one to be a four star, like, that was, a, that was fantastic. I read so many Book of the Month books, too, on top of it. So, like, my TBR for Book of the Month is doing well. Um, which you will see a video, it'll be, like, outdated by the time you see it, but, like, I filmed the video about, like, the unread books that I went into this year with for Book of the Month, so, like, I've been, like, tackling that down, um, so I feel like January was off to a great start, February's been a little slow, but my son's birthday is in the beginning of February, so he's officially one, which is, like, makes no sense, um, but we've been trying to celebrate him, so my reading's been a little bit slow, but I'm hoping that this means good things for the rest of the year. Um, how did your January go? Let me know down below and I will see you guys really soon. Bye everybody.